My name is Jam Allen, and I volunteer at Wildex, which is used to be an advocacy service. I'm the New Youth Affairs Council of Victoria. Wildex advocates for young people with disabilities and their rights. Hey, Philman, what are you doing? I'm working on a disability and sexuality grant for Daru. Awesome, we're meeting with George as well, aren't we? Let's go. Hey, <laughs> Now, I understand there's a new grant opportunity that we can apply for, and that's around uh, new self-advocacy issues. And you know how we're always hearing about sexuality and disability in our steering committee? Yeah. What do you reckon we, uh, we look at exploring that a bit further? I think it's a good idea because um, there are a lot of barriers and challenges around sexuality and disability. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And it's something our young people definitely wanted to work on for a long time. So what kind of barriers do you, do you think we should, uh, we should uh, explore in the group? A big one, one of the big ones is privacy. Yeah. Um, yeah, the disability community don't have a lot of privacy a lot of times. Yeah. And yeah, it's important, especially when sex is involved. The Act talks about um, people's right to privacy, but I guess it's not always thought of in terms of people being able to express their sexuality um, privately. Yeah. It's more around, you know, um, personal care, that kind of thing. Yeah. No, but I think it does relate to, uh, you know, all aspects of privacy. So what, what kind of issues do you sort of see as relevant to sexuality and privacy. Mm. If we're living with our families, we can't mm. go and like, meet our girlfriends mm. or boyfriends somewhere. Mm. We, you know, so I think that privacy in our, in our homes with our family is important. And you have a right to have, have a private life and to do things that you want to do without other people having to know about them. And I think when it comes to sexuality, Obviously, there's a need for people to be able to uh, privately do what they want to do. I mean, obviously, <laughs> if people uh, need uh, workers in their life, some of them might not have the same values as you or yeah, of I, and they might judge you if you have um, yeah. a sexual partner, yeah. or they might judge you, yeah. you know, based on your lifestyle. We get judged enough as you know, we get your lives. Breaking that down will be good. I think so. Another way that uh, young people often bring up um, judgment is around stereotypes of um, sexuality in young people with disabilities. So I think it would be really good to um, work on community ad attitudes towards yeah. people with disability and sexuality too. Yeah, and also the, yeah, the right to, to yeah, information about sexuality. I mean, we all, you know, we all have a right to know what uh what's safe what's not safe yeah. and and also you know if someone has a intellectual disability or a learning disability they might need information in another way yeah. that um, helps them understand it sure i went to a special school and i got like barely any sex education mm. at all so what do you reckon would be some of the stereotypes we want to break. I think one of the major ones is that people with disabilities you know, aren't interested in sex. But yeah, then there's the other end where they think that we're all sex maniacs. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you know. Uh, but the reality is, you know, people with disabilities like everyone else have a range of you know, sexual interests. and yeah. Some might be gay and lesbian, transgender, bisexual, you know, and that well, you know, there's a lot of diversity. Yeah. I think I'd like to break down that belief that if you get into a relationship with a person with a disability, you need to become their carer. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's that thing that um, also if you're in a relationship with someone with a disability that you must be an angel or you know, sent from heaven. Yeah, all the other ends of the scale that, you know, this, this all you can pick up is someone in a wheelchair. Ah, that you're desperate. Yeah, which is ridiculous. And what about the stereotype that people with disabilities should only be in relationships with other people with disabilities? <laughs> it's like, mm. But we don't have to. Yeah, we don't yeah. have to limit ourselves yeah. to only other people with disabilities. Yeah, yeah it's about, you know, you might you might be interested in you know, older people or younger people. The sexuality of young people with disabilities is just as diverse as anyone else's. I think that's yeah, of the, course. the main message. Yeah, really, but, yeah. yeah. Um, what about the stereotype that, um, that yeah, if you have a disability that you would have to have um, sex workers um, to um, have sex with yeah, you. Yeah, it's like, well, you know, you're not good enough for a relationship, but hey, go down the street, see a sex worker, and there's your answer. And I think the Disability Act talks a bit about choice, yeah. and and it talks about the right to, to, um, to make your own decisions. And mm -hmm. if you make a decision to access sexual services, then yeah, you should be supported to do that. Yeah. But the reality is, um, people that live in CIUs in particular have a lot more barriers um, when it comes to um, having sexual relationships. Yeah, yeah. Uh, imagine you know, having to you know, get the, the, the house to give you permission to have someone in your bed. That might be a bit complicated. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of different ways, you know, that people, apart from, you know, obviously relationships and sex workers and, you know, all sorts of things. There's all sorts of ways that people might want to enjoy their sexuality, you know, whether it be through, you know, porn or sex toys or yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, what, what if you need assistance to use these things? Yeah. What do you do then? So I think it's about educating people's, you know, people who are going to assist people with disabilities and carers about um, people's rights to be able to have sex and them being supportive of that. Yeah, and not be judgmental, you know. Mm. And also respecting people's privacy, so not, not telling other people. My parents are like, no point in their house. Mm. But like, I'm 23 years old. Man, I can't go anywhere else to look at porn. Oh. What am I missing? Exactly. People are understanding people have different values mm. to each other. Mm. And we all need to respect everyone else's values. Exactly. I'm not going to watch porn in the lounge room in front of them. Okay. But, um, yeah, I don't expect them to come into my room and tell me not to do what I'm doing in my room. Exactly. Yeah, that should be my space, and yeah. Well, I still need to think about, in terms of this, uh, this grant, what other objectives might we have? We're trying to do a lot. Yeah. That would be good if, if the group could, maybe not straight away, but look at doing some research into a particular area of disability and sexuality. I guess we can see what people want to do once you know, if we're successful in getting funding once it starts up. Yeah, and what are some, what are some good ways of supporting people in this area? Because I think that we just don't really take this area seriously enough in the, no. in the disability sector. And Try and hide it and, and you know, sweep it under the carpet. Yeah. But there is potential, you know, to look at some ways of, about people's lived experiences and what, what are the issues, what are the barriers, and what are some enablers to help people mm. to mm -hmm. to have um, enjoyable, you know, positive lives? I mean, in the end, that's what we're that's what we're on about. I have a few. Well, I got one, and then I. Yeah, it's, I don't know what they do, but they make me go back and go back and go back. So I've got five now.